Hey, welcome to Avionics Education on YouTube. Today, we're going to keep on talking about those handheld meters. Today, we're going to cover the time domain reflectometer. Hey, welcome back. My name is Bruce Bissett on Avionics Education on YouTube. If you haven't been here before, or if you have, please always remember to hit the like buttons and also share it with your friends if you find what's on this video informative. Also remember, give me a comment. Uh, down below for either ideas about uh, questions about avionics in the future, but also just to let the algorithm know that I'm here. Today we're going to talk about the time domain reflectometer. This particular instrument has been around for a long time, but only was used by larger airlines or engineering companies because the original units were these large oscilloscope type device. And what it was designed to do was to simply do nothing more than using a form of radar send a signal down any two conductor wire. Originally, that would have been coax. That's its purpose. It's to find anomalies in coaxial wire in an aircraft. A time domain reflectometer is designed to find anomalies in any two pair wire conductor. This could be a coax cable or could be a twisted shielded wire. As long as both conductors are evenly spaced, a TDR can be used to find faults. What type of faults? They can find faults in shielding, faults in opens or breaks, failures of connectors or cannon plugs, and can be used to find high impedance at antennas. The system works by connecting a cable to your TDR tester. Usually you run a 50 foot loop or a 25 foot loop just to have that first anomaly, your 50 ohm connection. So as we know from, we talked about this in, in the antenna section, that Coaxial connectors normally have a 50 ohm impedance uh, for coax wires to antennas because you're talking about high frequency energy being sent from the transmitter to the antenna. So at each place in the aircraft, there'll be a junction. When we look at the TDR scope, these older model ones, you'll see a blip on the screen that'll represent that 50 ohm drop. As you go along, you'll see eventually where the signal will drop off completely. The hope is the distance based on the station number of the aircraft will be at the antenna because the antenna should dissipate all the energy. If there's a short, you'll he see a large blip up. That means a lot of that energy that was sent down by the TDR got reflected in a short. And you could tell based on where it is on the scope by feet where that short could be. Now the short could be to each other, the conductors, or it could be short from the shield to ground. Each of these will have kind of a different signal. For example, a short to ground will give uh, a loss of impedance because that energy is being drawn down back to ground at that location. At any rate, you don't have to take the whole airplane apart and do a visual inspection of the wiring and the, and the uh, coax connectors to be able to use this device. That's the benefit of a TDR. So showing an example of an oscilloscope type display of a TDR, a modern TDR, we have the output connector, which inserts a two decibel loss automatically. We get our reference peak. Then we have the next peaks as it goes along to show the interconnections of anything, for example, uh, interconnections on production brakes for a large aircraft. In this example here, we've got a bend that's t that exceeds the limits of the coax, and it puts a loss of signal there. And you can see that the signal reflection drops down significantly at that point. We could go through, use this chart, use the locator on the aircraft's uh, uh, planning plans, find the station number, and physically look and see what's going on. Eventually the full signal will drop off as it gets to the end. Now, you as a technician could put a dummy on the end of it to try to guarantee that 50 ohm return or just leave the antenna on. And either way, the antenna should dissipate all the end of return and that should be your distance from the test connector to the TDR. Beautiful. It also works for twisted doubles. Twisted double wiring is a lot of errant wire and a communication wire in the aircraft. Uh, the only difference is it doesn't have a 50 ohm connection at each junction. However, if it does show an anomaly or if it shows a, a fault at the connector, you'll see that as a signal loss. Also, if the signal is completely shorted, for example, one of the connectors is, one of the connections is shorted, then you'll know exactly how many feet that short of the connector is. Original TDRs were these big, bulky, oscilloscope-looking items. Like I said, they were very expensive, uh, but when, when factored in the length and size of the aircraft, they were very useful. More modern units that came out in the 80s 
uh, were more capable. You could go through and adjust even the type of dielectric to get better a distance down the line. But today, with modern electronics and better sensing elements, now we have something called an impedance tester. It's still an, a cabling anomaly tester, meaning that as long as you have a two-conductor wire, it will give you a fault at some location. For example, this Via Bravo impedance meter can be used for a multitude of items, not just finding faults in cabling. It can be used as a vector impedance analyzer, an SWR meter, standing wave ratio meter, could be a cable tester, like we talked about before, could do spectrum analyzing, and it's a continuous wave source also. It has a signal on it uh, if you want to use another type of tracer to find uh, stray or broken wires. It's a very useful tool that's lightweight and can be used when you're fighting problems with cabling, especially uh, coax cables that are due to, uh, let's say, not good bonds between connectors or, or a dirty or corroded uh, base plate for an antenna. It helps us measure, especially on the standing wave ratio function. If you want to learn more about the time domain reflectometer and the impedance tester, please go to my book, Avionics Technician Handbook, Volume 1. I'll have the link down below in the comments section to my website where you can buy the book, or you could find it on Amazon.com. Just simply put Bassett Avionics in the search window, and it pops up to all my books that are available. Hey, thanks for sticking with me this long. Like I said, if you like what you see, go ahead and share it, and I'll see you in the next one.